thank you all for coming for this fun event this evening. <clears throat> uh, my daughters recently suggested I publish my poetry, which tries to encapsulate an experience with its feelings. Using poetic voice can enhance that picture, somewhat akin to changing a scene on stage by adding a scrim, a see-through curtain intended to overlay a, mo a mood to what is said. Rhythm in a poem establishes anticipation in the flow of words. And as tunes may invite dancing feet. Vocabulary, unique to each person, changes the lyrics for the music of life, lets you see into the writer's vision. If I can describe what I see in a way that provides others a tool to enhance their own vision, then I feel I have achieved something. <clears throat> I accept this honor with great joy <laughs> and am acutely aware that my appointment as Chaplin's first poet laureate carries a responsibility to reveal the fact that poetic voice as an instrument is already in your hands and your hearts. It also means that I should be careful not to abuse the generous attention of a courteous but captive audience, <laughs> especially at supper time. <laughs> so as I imagine you are curious to hear the poem which the library committee selected as expressing what they hoped to hear concerning the beauty, the history, and the culture of Chaplin as I have known it since 1965. I offer my Idols of the Town. <clears throat> Welcoming crowds of crisping leaves accumulated along the road, leaving cornfield spills to turkeys Fascinated, I turned a corner, made a wish upon a load of hay drawn by a tractor, and found this place the benefactor. Stone walls and maples found the, framed the land, where a couple, wearing overalls across at least one generous belly, were raking hay by hand and picking conquered grapes for jelly. Wallace Nutting could have stood his camera there, capturing the crisp fall air. The 19th century vernacular white clabbered capes and handsome bricks, an arch of trees, spectacular for a quiet corner in the sticks. A library and church appeared, and the seat, though not the seating of government, the old town hall was much too small to chair a meeting. <laughs> An intimidating safe and in black, immense, guarded the door with gravity so intense it warped the floor beneath the station of our town clerk of 50 years duration. <laughs> Who answered questions? Go out the door and down the steps, turn hard right, it's painted blue. The visiting governor, who must have thought he knew a joke when he had heard one, laughed. I remember that I said to my daughter's smiling head reflected in the mirror, I want to live here. Our children grew up in a place where they could walk to school and our neighbors knew the golden rule. The music of the river traced the seasons in its bed beneath its covers, murmuring on bitter nights a counterpoint to canid songs in praise of brilliance overhead, which etched blue shadows on the lawn's reflected light. Winter's thaw will swell the flow, eventually breaking the ice, then damming with timpani a symphony envied by overachievers in Darling Pond, 
the resident peepers. <laughs> then choirs of peepers in their vernal pools sing lustily to wake the sleepers. And fishermen on opening day as a rule eat breakfast at the fire station hoping for trout with their next ration. With blossoms comes a drowsy hum as tippling bees swig nectar from the buds of trees while making unreliable promises that frost is past to doubting Thomases. <laughs> when we replaced a bridge, it started with a load of gravel, enabling our cars to travel on a Ford. This rite of passage gave small quarter to youngsters leaping from a tree onto a rope swing, which hopefully released them into deeper water. <laughs> In August, quilts were spread upon the church's newly mown front lawn, first to hear the Coast Guard band perform, first stilled by the miracle of sound, the children sitting on the ground rose and marched in time and place their norm for Susa. Then they spun until they staggered and were done. As music ends, the babies fuss, though mom provides a homemade snack, and father loads the family bus where dog left slightly muddy tracks. Those who came on foot at last begin to walk away while robins soften twilight with their pleasant rondelay. I've seen how this small town engages. Permanence is found in pages of matching names, births, deeds, and taxes, and on the gravestones and mailboxes. Yet the town is far from static sepia photos in an attic. Eclectic tastes, creative minds, enhance this place of natural beauty. <clears throat> a sturdy sense of what is kind, of stewardship and duty, bind awareness of the rareness of our home. <laughs>